Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Stay tuned with us as we are going to delve in, dive in, and discuss some of the amazing things God did at our recent Rock Life Podcast 2024. Whether you are here or not, you are going to benefit from this episode, so make sure that you listen up because, man, God is doing some amazing things, not just at our church, not just in our lives, but also we believe that it can be happening in your life as well. My name is Antonio, and I am here with Pastor Dan. Hello, everybody. Pastor Dan, we are, I don't know exactly, 25, 26, 27 weeks in of meeting here weekly, and I'm having it's a great amazing. time. Yeah, I am too. I think this has been fun you yeah. know, to discuss the the sermons and recap all that kind of stuff. And, and even I'm getting a lot of comments from our listeners and viewers. Yeah. And uh, I mean, even like in passing, it's yes. kind of fun because some of you guys are like, you know, hey, Pastor Dan, this, that, and the other. And by the way, the podcast is great, you know, yeah. and I, I just, that blesses me. So yeah. thank you guys for those shout outs and, and for the love. It always is encouraging, you yeah. know, and it, it, it's fun because, you know, there's a part of you, you we're here. Yeah. Are people listening? When you're preaching a message, you see the people in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> and and that's the thing is if people weren't giving me those comments, yeah. I'd be like, should we be doing this podcast? Yeah. You know? And, and I think, it, it, again, our prayer is that it's beneficial to people and, you know, even if it's an entertainment factor as you do your errands or drive, drive to work, yeah, yeah. drive to work. Uh, we are blessed to be part of your running routines. on the treadmill. That's right. Make sure to breathe and drink lots of mowing water. the lawns, what, whatever yeah, it might it's be. It's a fun time to listen to a podcast. You know, Pastor Dan. Yes. Sleep. I think we've talked about sleep before. From what I've gathered, you are more a night owl and not so much a morning. Yeah. Person. But are you a pretty routine guy in sleep? Do you need seven, eight? nine yes. hours yes. and like you don't want to know the Dan older Rock. i get okay. the more uh like 11 to 7 i am it's okay. kind of a, a pretty yeah you know and your body's shutting down like 11 you know like your body knows yeah it used to be i'd be 1 2 a.m yeah. and then you know i'll be able to sleep in now like if if we're going past a certain threshold yeah. i'm my mind is turning off so yeah, it's it's been kind of hard because having teenagers, they want to be up late and talk, and right, yeah. You know, there's been times like, hey, I know this is important, yeah, but can we pick this up at seven a.m. tomorrow? You know, like yeah. it's just, you know, I feel bad, but um, you know, it's one of those things that happens, I guess. You know, I'm, right? I'm, I'm coming up on forty five and like month and a half oh, here. That's right, forty five. Yeah, Happy it's gonna happen. birthday! Thanks. November second. November second. If I, you were wondering, that was going to be the next question. Yeah, cash. Um, yeah, cash app works. Yeah, you can send the uh, presents right I'll into the stocks office. And bonds, stocks and hey, come on now. <laughs> you know, love it. Um, so, well, the reason why I bring it up is because I know I've heard different things about brain health and healthy. Sure. But yeah. I, al- I I'm fine. The reason is that maybe it's because I'm I'm finding myself where you're trying to fit everything in right your kids you mentioned you have teenagers i have yeah. toddlers oh gosh and so sometimes with the toddlers it, it, yeah and a teen so i'm navigating you know the teen wants to stay up but then my toddlers don't like to go to sleep right uh and then it's it's late by the time we get them to bed and the time that i can try to get alone and been talking about and hearing even at conference and in my own life trying to be alone with jesus like the only time is is like i have to get up really early for that yeah um my cell phone. I'm sorry, I put it us. in the wrong spot. I was buzzing. Oh, sorry. okay, that's all right. We we, if, we if picked hear, it up on the mic. Yeah, if you hear buzzing on the mic, I I chose the wrong spot <laughs> to put my. It was on silent mode, but yeah. it just still does, does the buzz. But yeah, it, it. Sorry, it went through the mic. That's okay. I think it was. It did pick it up, huh? Yeah. No. That's and and what's amazing? So for our viewers, you can't see Ian off to the side, but I I realized like, this is going on the podcast because Ian started <laughs> getting uncomfortable and moving. And looking around to figure out where the cell phone was. Yeah, and, you know, we're not so professional that, you know, yeah. like, cut, right? No, we, edit, we can leave that in. Um, but I, I find like, oh, shoot, I got, I'm going to have to wake up earlier and earlier. And I've so I've set an alarm for early. Then I wake up uh, and feel like I'm running out of time. So I set it even earlier. But then what I was, I was sharing with Angelina. So I'm waking up even earlier. But then I'm like, oh, I have time. And so I take my time. <laughs> like I take longer. Yeah. Do I get myself ready? Then try to go have some devotional time. Then work on the lunches. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this is. And going back to sleep, I s- still feel OK. Yeah. Right. But I wonder if I'm maybe it's not like, oh, it'll catch up to you. But then I've read like some people just get six hours and they just. 
they can do it. Yeah, I think, I don't know, you know, I've heard different things about even catching up on sleep and, yeah. and what you need and, and uh, things about, like, as you get older, you may need less yeah. and, and stuff like that. So I don't know, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm like I said, I, I've got uh, an internal clock in my body. That, right. You know, um, but I, to, to be fair, I have been waking up at like 6.30, mm-hmm. sometimes 6. Yeah. And um, I think just the biggest thing is is motivating myself to get out of bed. Yeah. Because I'll be awake, but it's like right. it just feels good to <laughs> keep my eyes closed. And, well, and this, is, this is the best time of the year where it's like not super cold in the morning, but cold enough where that bundle just. Good. Right. Doesn't yeah. it just like, oh, man, and then it gets harder to get out so of bed. So this morning. My stupid dog is sitting <laughs> on the edge of the bed, which my wife lets the dog on the bed. Which <laughs> that's a, a whole other podcast. Yeah, it's different. I think I've talked about this plenty of times, but the dog just sits there and licks. Mm, Nothing. Like, yeah. not not her paw, yeah, yeah. not her side, not <laughs> the bed, just the air. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like... And, that and, sound. And so I'm getting, like, angry, like, yeah. swinging over my wife, like, get off the bed. You know, like, get, get out of here if you're going to lick, you know. And then my wife's like, leave her alone. <laughs> Just tell her to stop, and I'm going. I I am like, yeah. <laughs> stop and get off the bed, you know. <laughs> Trying to as get I to push know. her, yeah, yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. I don't know. I'm 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 trying to figure that out. Trying to figure out what's optimal for me. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I feel like I I I, I can still function. I don't drink coffee out of necessity. I drink it because I like the. F- In other yeah. words, I don't go like, oh, I need a cup, or like, see me after my cup. You know how there's those mugs like yeah have you seen that one there's like the gauges uh-huh oh yeah it's like talk to me later or i'm red not yet or almost there and then they actually have color change ones yes i've seen seen that yes pretty crazy that that when the coffee's hot in there and it's like you know don't talk to me and then once the cup is empty it's like okay now we can talk yeah see and and i don't feel that's what coffee does for me i i I like out of out of routine as well like the yeah like the flavor and i like the routine of coffee I just I don't I know. I love the flavor and and I've gotten into that more and more, but I still am like my body, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm just a, a well tuned machine. I right. I can have one cup a day. Yeah. Pretty much. Otherwise I get the jitters. Mm-hmm. And then if I eat drink it too late, yeah. I'm I'm up all night. Yeah, and I can't have coffee on an empty stomach. I oh. like it's like you know how something or, or at least have to have a bunch of water. Yeah. Right? Like if I know I'm gonna have a cup of coffee first thing, I'll have to pound some water. Really? Yeah, just just cause otherwise I will Almost first sup, uh, first sip. I'm like, are you good? And it's un- yeah, it's uncomfortable, and I don't, I don't mm. like it. It almost like, makes me feel kind of anxious. I'm like, what is, what is this? I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. If I drink too much, I'll feel that way. Yeah, and it's yeah. just not fun. But that's why I'm a one, like I said, one cup a day. I'm good. Yeah, you know, and most of the time it's espresso. Mm. Are these older man issues, Pastor Maybe. Dan, that we have? Are we it having forty be. something conversations right it now? It might be. I oh apologize to all of our young listeners. Yeah. But, hey, at least you're getting a view into your future. That's right. Right? So we're helping you out. That's right. Well, Pastor Dan, today uh, we are talking, uh, again, we, we talked about, we wanted to, to discuss some of the amazing things. Obviously, we are going to recap these messages, this series that we're in. We just finished part two, depending when you're listening to this. We just finished part two of God's judgment versus man's. Is that yes. the official title? Sorry. I'm, I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, God's, God's judgment, judgment versus, versus man's. man's. Um, and we just finished part two, which this series has been great. Each message is a standalone message, which I feel like you used to say that. Remember, remember when we were in, um, the last book, yeah, body life, you're like, each is a, it's a, it is a standalone, but yet it is kind of coming together. And I can see as part two shapes into it and there'll be one more part. Um, and so if we don't talk about that today, be stay tuned for next week because we'll, recap the last couple of weeks i think these past series that we've been doing on the wrath of god and the judgment of god especially um while the messages do stand alone at the same time to get the connective thought all three messages in the series yeah. are important to have together yeah. and um and i think that's where with like especially god's judgment versus man's judgment it, it's connected to the wrath of god yeah. because that that introduced that thought mm-hmm. and then brought us into the thought of judgment uh, because that's that's the expression of the wrath, right? Um, but when we come into the this series on judgment, and even uh, what's next is we're going to go, here's a little preview for those of you that are listening. Yeah, you, I mean, I was you starting to drop my next that question. Yeah. Big yeah. drop yeah. right now. Big reveal. You, you heard it first on the Rock Life podcast. We're going to yeah. go to, to Attitudes and Actions. Uh-huh. That'll be our next series. So it's like flow. It's all flowing. It, it's, it's all connected, but at the same time, it's all its own series yeah 
And especially with judgment, I think that, um, you know, if, if we don't get to judgment today, it will still, I think, be better in the sense of, of connecting the two series. Because yeah. we can do, you know, mm-hmm. stuff from just part two. Yeah. But part two and three are very closely connected. Cool. Um, just because you introduce the thought of judgment, you find out that it's according to truth and that we shouldn't be judgmental. But then these next two are very closely related mm-hmm. in the sense of what we're talking about when it comes to the characteristics of God's judgment. Yeah. You know, we, we talked about that it's inescapable, yeah. you know, and uh, and that, w- that it's patient, yeah. which, which it foreshadowed what we're going to be talking about next week, where we're going to talk about... Um, you know, what the book of Hebrews talks about, where it, it talks about one of the basics of the faith is eternal judgment. Mm. And so we're going to get into that yeah. next week and hit that hard. Um, and But that's all connected with the patience and with the inescapable quality of the judgment of God. So if we if we do end up doing it next week, yeah. I, I think it'll be great. Um, but if we do get into some of it this week, I think it'll be just as great. Well, you know, and, and I... You you mentioned it, but I really am enjoying these even these mini series and how they connect because I feel like we're getting a better scope of contextually Romans. Yes, right. Whereas I know in the past we've had um, we go through a book and and each week can feel so profound. There's so much from each week you can lose picture of like oh we're in this book right right. But Romans we're seeing the picture and we're seeing I I, I just I'm liking how it's progressing. It, it's yeah, it's almost like a uh, a trip across the United States. You yeah. know, when you hit a new state, yeah, you you yeah. You, you you can tell mm-hmm. it's it's crazy, especially coming. I know there's some states. You know, I've driven through the Midwest. All yeah, that. I, I actually did a missions trip where we did border border coast to coast, and so I've mm. seen a lot of the United States. Um, but uh, you know, some of the Midwest and some of those areas, you you don't know when you cross right. state lines yeah. except for the sign on the side of the yeah. road. But from California to Arizona, yep. from Arizona to New Mexico, from New Mexico into Texas, yep. and then even Texas and Oklahoma, you, the landscape changes. Right. You know, and like I said, there's parts that are very similar, but I mean, especially those first three states that I talked about, California to Arizona, the, the dirt literally turns from yeah. brown to red. Right. Yeah. The mountains go from having peaks to having flat yep. tops. Yep. And then when you go from Arizona to New Mexico, it goes from red to like this, uh, I don't know, it's like kind of uh, orangish. Yeah, is green. that the one where, what are they, is that, they the call mesas? that the majestic state or which one's the majestic? Oh, I don't know. Which is the one that's supposed to be, I forgot, I think it's New Mexico. Probably. We used to do that road trip often from California to Texas. Yeah. Um, and It's th- actually a great trip, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're right, because it is, so Highway we've done 40. it in winter and so it's not as hot, yeah, but yeah, it's so it you get the hot. pretty. But the reason why I bring that up is because when you go through a book like Romans, even though you're going chapter to chapter, mm-hmm. you know, there is a progression that you realize I'm on a trip. I'm on a yeah. journey and God is taking me somewhere. And while there might be as from chapter one to chapter two, it seems like, man, we, we hit the wrath of God. and All of a sudden everything changed. You yeah. know, here we are in Arizona now. Everything's red, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, but we're still on the same road. It's good. We're still going through that same book. And I think that's the thing is that God's taking us on a journey. And the journey literally is the gospel message, right? right? Yep. The dispensation of grace that we're living in that Paul wanted to talk to the Roman world. Mm-hmm. And, and really, when we when we think about Romans, I think that's why this book is so important is because Rome at the time was the capital city of the world right in in right. every intent and purpose and so for us if if i was going to write a letter to the world what would it be mm-hmm. you know what i mean i think that's what the apostle paul was doing here's what i want to tell the world yeah about the gospel and about the grace that's that's contained within yeah. it yeah uh, that that takes us through the wrath of god and the mm-hmm. judgment of god and and you know uh a lot of uh, there's a whole lot of theological words running through my brain right yeah. now that I'm not going to uh, use just because we'll, we'll save those <laughs> yeah. for those chapters, yeah. you know, chapter three and, um, you know, and on, we're going to, we're going to hit a lot of that stuff hard, Cool, but, uh, but it'll be great, you know, but it's this trip that's this journey yeah. that God's taking us on. Well, that's cool, Pastor Dan. And so I, I am looking forward to that. And I, based on our conversation already, I'm thinking we're probably past the time limit to even give it its due justice. So okay. we'll stick on this topic gotcha. from RockCon. Uh, and just to bring Rock everybody on. up to speed, um, throughout the sessions, there was there was a, a grace throughout the whole thing. But unknowingly, the Holy Spirit really pieced together. Yeah. It's almost like you would have thought we spoke to every speaker and told them what to say and put the Holy Spirit did. And it, right. which is what made it all the more beautiful, because there was just a beautiful theme going on throughout now. We had a personal theme that we were believing. Obviously, it was called grace. It, 
It was part of our year of grace, but we also had a heart that it would be equipping for the saints. Yeah. Uh, and I believe it was just that. I've had several conversations at church and outside of church, just casually with people. Uh, I've heard even testimonies of like, man, after that conference, it's made me gather some of the Christians at my job. And now we're going to do a Bible study f- uh, as believers because it just it, it lit something in me that I want to yeah. do more with my faith, which is what we want. Equip it's the exactly saints for the wanted. work of the ministry, which yeah. and then what we also saw. And I'm going to use this word and I, I'll allow you to kind of um, ex- explain here. Um, but there was a lot of prophetic words, a lot mm-hmm. of uh, utterances, if you will, uh, that the different speakers said there is proclamations that were made and they they use the word prophet. I'm going to say this prophetically or I'm sure. going to I'm going to say this because I believe the spirit of God is saying this. Some of the Christian language that we use to explain some of these things. Now, some of them were specific to, for example, you and Pastor Jessica. Some were specific to this house. And what I wanted to take the time to do today was for those listening those who were there and I heard for many people like, Oh man, I was so blessed because I love that for pastor Dan and Jess. Yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. That was awesome for them. But I also knew there, there was that, that if our leaders are being given this word, that means something for me as part sure. of this house as well. Yeah. It's kind of like, I feel like if we're part of this house, if my parents get blessed when I was living at home, everyone under that roof is going to be blessed. Absolutely. Right. Everyone, uh, th- if there's something that's an assignment put on a home as part of a function of that home, there's something for me. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted to have this discussion yeah. and conversation, because if the Rock Church and World Outreach Center is your home or if you connect with us in any kind of way, I believe that this there was some amazing things that happened for us. Yeah. And so I wanted to maybe see, Pastor Nan, if you could break this down and. What do we need to do? What are some next steps? How do we partner in faith? How do we pray moving forward? Sure. Yeah. No, I think, um, first of all, uh, you know, the Bible talks about prophecy as foretelling. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people think of prophecy only as future events, you mm-hmm. know, the return of Jesus, things yeah. like that, the end times. Uh, whereas there can be a prophecy that uh, is is an exhortation that mm-hmm. builds you up. Um, you know, the, the book of First Corinthians chapter number 12 and chapter number 14 talk about the gifts and talk about prophecies and how it edifies Mm -hmm. and it builds with the church. The Apostle Paul said, I I wish that everybody prophesied rather than spoke in tongues so that the church would be edified, built up. Yeah. Right. And so we know that the prophetic utterance is something that God is, is forth telling. He's Mm -hmm. building someone up. It's for edification. It's for encouragement. Um, And it can include elements of foretelling, Mm -hmm. future casting, Right. Right. Uh, hey, this is going to happen. And we see this with uh, the prophet Agabus mm-hmm. in the book of Acts, where he talked about that there was going to be a famine that hit the whole world. Yeah. And so they were able to understand what was coming up. They were able to be prudent and wise, take cover, uh, take heed. As well, the believers started to take collections and send that to the saints in Jerusalem who were who were suffering. Yeah. The other thing, too, we see that Agabus did was that he bound himself with Paul's belt and said the owner of this belt will be bound in Jerusalem. Again, right. that's foretelling future events. But what is he doing? He's getting Paul ready on the inside. Now, everybody else said, hey, don't go. But Paul right. said, no, no, I, I'm going to go. Right. So he went in eyes wide open yeah. knowing what was going to happen to him there. And so there's that element of foretelling, but also foretelling. Sometimes the prophetic word is, is that, uh, you know, hey, I, I need you to know that God really loves you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I need you to know what God is doing now in this moment. And I felt in, in my heart that at RockCon that there was going to be a, a lot of prophetic, mm-hmm. um, you know, knowing our guests and who was coming, yeah. um, knowing their their ministries and things like that. I was expectant yeah, going in. Absolutely. And I knew that God was going to speak to the church, number mm-hmm. one. But I also knew that God was going to speak to me. Yeah. Uh, me and Pastor Jessica, yeah. and and I I had prayed for that, and I had asked God for that. Mm-hmm. That was a part of one of the things that I wanted was the prophetic word. I wanted to hear from God. Yeah. I wanted to hear that, you know. And conference is the time to do that, you know, when Absolutely. we've got more time, when we're allowing the Spirit of God to move. And so, um, especially night one, with. Uh, Pastor Sammy Rodriguez. I mean, he just really brought a word. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And and um, had, uh, y- you know, that whole story in itself yeah. that he he went through there in in the life of Elijah. 
um, you know, is, is very significant years and years ago at a next gen conference, which was our mm-hmm. like youth and young adults. Yeah. I remember when pastor Jim called out and he asked if you want a double portion right. of the mantle, mm-hmm. come, come to the altars. And yeah. I remember, uh, after letting all the youth and everybody get prayed for pastor Jess and I went down and pastor Jim laid his hands on us and prayed over us a double portion of mm-hmm. anointing mm-hmm. and that mantle upon us. And, um, and, you know, so we, we treasure those things in our hearts and yeah. we, we hold those things in our hearts. And so, uh, when we were in praise and worship that night, I remember it was, you know, we, we did kind of a little break in between. You did three songs and then yeah. we had a little break where I exhorted, talked about the conference theme. And then we did three more songs. Well, on the second song of that second three songs, right? So I don't know what number that would be, five or something yeah. like that, song <laughs> five. Um, but uh, I remember just getting down on my hands and knees before the Lord and just um, allowing the Spirit of God to just move and, and do what He only can do. And many times during praise and worship, I felt like in the spirit that God was anointing me, you know, putting, uh, it almost feels like hot oil over my yeah. head that just kind of drips down. And, um, and I just, you know, love those moments where physically you get uh, a supernatural experience that, that you can only describe it's, it's spiritual, right? But, but there's a, a physical feeling that you get that, that happens. And so oftentimes during praise and worship, I felt that, mm-hmm. you know. And so that same sensation started, and I was just, you know, praying and crying and, and singing and, and allowing the Lord to do that. But this time something different happened. Normally it would drip down. This time it stopped, and it rested over my shoulders, kind of over my neck and my back there. And it was just, like, hot. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that's different, you know. Like, and, and so I prayed and I asked God. I said, God, what is this? And God said one word in my spirit, mantle. And I thought, okay. Now, I know you're not supposed to fleece God. You're never supposed to test the Lord. Right. But I did in that moment say, okay, um, this is new. You know, this yeah. is something fresh. And I said, Lord, okay, if this is a mantle, then God, would you confirm that as Sammy Rodriguez speaks? Okay. Right. Now, I hadn't looked at his sermon notes. Right. He sent them to our, our teams yeah. here and that sort of a thing. I, hadn't, I didn't know what section of Scripture he was going through, but the fact that he gets up there and preaches a whole sermon mm-hmm. on the mantle being passed. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, I, you know, if I was asking yeah. for a sign, here's yeah. a billboard right. in my face, right. Right, right? That I just was slapped with. So, and, and then for us to get up on the platform, him to speak over us that there was a, the mantle has been passed. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we know we've had the church for, you know, uh, coming up next month will be nine years, yeah. you know? So in some ways we could say, yeah, the mantle has been passed, but, but in the spirit, I think God was reconfirming. And, and God was giving us that, that uh, you know, encouragement once mm-hmm. again, that, that, that foretelling mm-hmm. and foretelling, you know, that, that God was both, this is what God is doing now, mm-hmm. and this is what God wants to do in the future. There was a very specific word that was spoken where he said the second harvest will be greater than the first. Mm-hmm. That, that dropped on me and, and literally uh, probably tears shot out of my face at that moment just because it was like it hit me yeah. so hard because... You know, when we look at the history of the rock mm-hmm. and, and when you wonder, God, what are you doing in this season? What are you doing in this time? It almost, you know, the devil wants to come and tell you, well, it's done. Right. Pastor Jim and Deborah, they were so great. Like, you're not, you know, and, mm-hmm. and lie to us and tell us that our season is over. Um, you know, we've heard uh, leadership experts talk about the shelf life of a church is 25 right. years. Well, we're at 36. Right. You know, unless we reinvent, unless we get a fresh breath, unless we tap into what God is doing now, yeah. we'll, we'll die on the vine, right. you know? And, and so to have such a fruitful ministry and such a, a powerful start for us to continue the work, um, we, we need that breath of God. Mm-hmm. And so to hear that the second harvest would be greater than the first, I, I, I know that, that that's not a belittling of, of our past. No, I, and I know. I know that those who have gone before us, when they hear those types of things, they rejoice because mm-hmm. that's their desire, right? Yes. And, and my thing is, is it's not about numbers. It's mm-hmm. not about being better than them. It's not about, well, look at what we did. Yeah. It, it's about souls. Mm-hmm. And it, it should be that way in the kingdom. Right. You know, should the Lord tarry whoever I hand it off to, mm-hmm. I would hope that their harvest would be greater than mine right. too because they're building on the platform right. that we've built, right, right. And, and continuing the work. And, and so, you know, in those moments, um, when the mantle was placed on us, and, and when I say the mantle, you know, symbolically, uh, Pastor Samuel took his uh, 
his friend's coat and put it over yeah. our shoulders. Um, but he stated that this is not just for pastors, Dan and Jessica. This is for the rock. Right. Right. That mantle can't be just me winning souls. It has to be this church. Right. It can't just be me inviting people. It has to be our full time ministers yeah. that are going yep. out to the, the highways and the byways, compelling them mm-hmm. to come in. Um, that mantle has to be. And, and he talked about the mantle of integrity. Mm hmm of innovation. I have to go back and listen to it again. Yeah, he, he did list specific things. Very specific. Right. And and those are the things that I think that, that when you talk about the practical, so what do we do with that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have to walk in integrity. Right, that's right. Uh, we have to look for ways of innovation. Oftentimes, innovation comes in a need. Mm-hmm. And so when we see a need, we've got to sow a seed. I, I learned that from uh, Abundant Living. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're oh, right. going to their 30-year yeah. thing, and they, they had yeah. that as a statement. I love that. You know, mm-hmm. I've adopted that as my own, so yeah. now it's mine. Got to keep it. <laughs> But, um, you know, just to just to, to see what uh, what was brought, you know, those are the things that we have to give more attention to what was spoken. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm personally going to take some time, go back with a pause button, because, yeah. <laughs> because there was so much said in such a short period of yeah. time to be able to uh, to listen to that again and write those things down. Right. But but in the moment when when we when we get those words, we have to, to store them in our heart. The Bible says that Mary, when she received the word from Simeon, she she treasured all those things in her heart and waited on mm-hmm. the Lord for those things mm-hmm. to come to pass. Um, we've had multiple words uh, and multiple prophecies about uh, this house mm-hmm. and the multiplication that God's going to do in this house. Many yeah. times people who have seen into the spirit and seen what God is doing in this house have seen that as flowers sprouting up. Right. Um, you know, and and this conference, when I was looking around at the new carpet, mm-hmm. which the old carpet had it too, yeah. but something about this new carpet, when I was looking around, we've got these big squares mm-hmm. that are very yeah. uh, frilly, you oh, know, yeah. and that yeah. sort of thing. And it was almost like as I was looking at them, you know, most of the time when we look at them, we see the little angels mm-hmm. in there because yeah. if, if you're at the rock, look at the carpet. Yeah. There's a little circle, and then it looks like wings, and then it looks like legs yeah. coming down. It's yeah. really cool. So yeah. we've always kind of looked at that like, oh, look at the angels. This time, though, when I looked at those frilly designs, oh wow, I saw flowers. Wow, so it's just like a field of flowers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and and you know, if you look at like uh, this year's devotional, mm-hmm. part of the the cover and part of the design, even some of the photos, I took some photos of Lake Elsinore when they had the super bloom. Yes. And um, you know, that's the California s- state flower, and just to see it cover the hills and to cover you know that area. Um, you know, God, God has given us that picture that there is water in a dry yeah. land, yep. that there is a rain that he's going to bring. Um, in fact, before the conference even started, Jeff Osborne was in our prayer meeting. Mm-hmm. He prayed and then he came over to Pastor Jessica and I and gave us a word and said, hey, um, God gave me from the book of Joel uh, that God's going to give you the former rain and the latter rain. Wow. Now, that speaks of mm-hmm. two harvests, right? Yeah. The yeah. first harvest and the second harvest. And so for Sammy to get up and say the second harvest will be greater than the first, Jeff literally was on the sidelines, yeah. like <laughs> lifting his hands up, like, bro, are you are you hearing yeah, this? God yeah, is right. reiterating and reemphasizing. Yeah. Those are the things that we you know, when you say partner up, obviously we're gonna do our part, mm-hmm. but we have to trust that God is gonna bring that to pass. Right. We can cast the net in obedience, but mm-hmm. God's the one that's going to yes. fill it with fish. Yep. We can plant, we can water, but God gives the increase. Right. And, and I think that's where there's that partnership of faith that says, all right, I'm going to do what I know to do, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not going to try and get out ahead of God and make something happen right. or force something to happen. Yeah. You know, I'm going to pray and I'm going to feel the leading of God and, and listen to the Spirit and allow Him to bring that word to pass. Yeah. I I can't make tens of thousands of people get saved, right? Because right. we've had harvests over, it, pr- probably over the, the decades of this mm-hmm. church, there's been hundreds of thousands that have walked our house. Right. I can't make that happen again. Right. Only by the Spirit of God drawing people to Himself, and only, you know, the Bible says that no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit, right? Yep. So if God is declaring, I'm going to bring a harvest, I have to trust that God's going to bring a harvest. Yeah. But what is my labor in, involved in that? Well, then that would be where I preach the word. That would be where I minister. That would be where I, I store yeah. those things in my heart. Uh, you know, another prophetic word that was given was by, um, I think it was by Julian. Um, I have Again, I have to go back yeah. and listen yeah, yeah. and write all this stuff down. But um, someone said that there will be supernatural resource for this house. Oh, I think yes. specifically it over the next have... 18 months. 
I might have. That sounds like uh, Pastor Julian from Oasis. Yep. I think he said that. I yep. don't, you know. Yeah. If I miss that, does I sound. Apologize. But and and it may have been that it yeah. was spoken by multiple people right. as well. Again, when you're up there getting a word, it's yeah. like the whole world right. is upside down and crazy. Well, so. if I could just quickly, Pastor Dan, because what you're saying, none of these were specific to Pastor Dan, no, or the staff, the pastoral staff, or the staff of the Rock Church. Like you said, all of those things excite all of us i think so yeah. because the house is going to be fruitful we're going to see yes. amazing things come out of the rock that means the people that i bring as a non-staff member if this is my church i'm a member of this church yeah. i'm bringing loved ones i'm bringing neighbors I, i'm seeing fruit around me right yeah. that's not a word to so you can say look how many people got saved under my ministry as this is impacts the individual lives right because all those people are touched by somebody somebody brought them Right. You invite people, but yet other people invite others as well. Well, again, the partnership is, is one invites, the other does mm -hmm. the altar call. Right. And, hey, yes. someone's added to the kingdom. Yep. One planted a seed, the other put in the sickle. Right. You know, and that's where even in that prophecy of Joel, mm -hmm. it says that the harvester will catch up to the sower. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be happening so rapidly and so yes. fast yep. that he's going to be like, hey, can you hurry up and plant more seed? Because right. I'm, I'm done behind you, man, and I've caught up. Well, and I think... We might not, uh, that harvest, the, the second harvest larger than the first, might not even necessarily mean in the aisles of this church building. Sure. It could mean that you at your office are fruitful. You and the ministry Absolutely. that you're called to is fruitful. You and your business is fruitful that stemmed out of the house. Missions, church plants. Exactly. Uh, salvation and streets, revival. Yep. You know, these are things that we pray for and believe for. And mm -hmm. absolutely, I, my my hope and prayer is is that people get mm -hmm. their friends, coworkers, neighbors, mm -hmm. relatives yeah. saved and then bring them to church. Yeah. Or if you if you bring them to church, yeah. then, hey, w you know there's yeah. going to be an altar call. Right. But either way, yeah. that we're rejoicing together Amen. at work, you know. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the beauty of these words. And so, like I said, I'm going to go back and listen again. Yeah. There was so much in there. Uh, well, you were touching on on the, the resource. It, well, even the resource, yeah. I, I think, you know, one of the things that opened our eyes this time around was business leaders. Mm -hmm. There was capacity in the, in the chapel. Right. And, uh, you know, I heard that the content was phenomenal. I'm going to go back and listen to that. But, um, you know, really, I, I believe that, that God wants to bless businesses. Mm -hmm. He wants to start businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we said is not just for business owners, it's for people that want to start. Yep. And I believe that God is birthing entrepreneurship mm -hmm. in, the, in the rock yeah. and in, in the people. Um, you know, we've seen that in the past uh, with guys like Larry Perez, who's mm -hmm. gone on to be with the Lord. Right. He just heard a word that he can do it, you right. know, and that he could start a business. And so he did. Right. Started mowing lawns and, and had a very successful business to where when he would go off and, uh, you know, when the Lord would speak, he'd just write a check yep. for whatever that amount was that God gave him. And um, was very prosperous and, and a wonderful man of God, one of the top 50 givers in our church. Right. Wow. Coming from nothing, having yeah. no job. Right. Heard from his pastor at the time mm -hmm. was Pastor Jim. Hey, right. you can start a business. Went out and did it and became one of the top yep. 50 givers. Gets equipped, gets built up. Yeah, yeah. And the, what I love about that scripture when we make declarations and have an abundance for every good work. Every good work. Not abundance so I can give into the tithes and offerings and, and, and pledges. Those are awesome. I'm glad. But when my neighbor's in need. Sure. When these people are in need. When I, like he would go visit a church because he's on vacation. Yeah. Wants to sow a seed. I have an abundance Absolutely. for every good work. And wow, what an amazing richness. Well, we've dropped numbers, you know, we're, we're currently working on our well at mm -hmm. the time of this recording. And, you know, I've dropped the number $180,000. What if somebody was so prosperous right. that they said, hey, I'll pay for the well. Right. What else? Absolutely. Right. How much is the roof? 2.1, 2.2 million dollars to redo the roof. Hey, me and the guys will get together. We'll take care of it, Pastor. So when we hear these prophetic words about resource, I think those are the way that that's some of the fruit that we'll see some. Yeah, that we'll get to announce some of those things. But sometimes it's a little play resources more right. than money too. Right. You know, I think that that's where. OK, so, hey, we need an open door in the city. Mm -hmm. We need an open door with the school district. We right. need, you know, th there's plenty of resources. There. Buildings being given. Hey, wow. Open doors. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, yeah. Our next church plant could be that somebody says, hey, I've got a building for you over here. Right. You know, Yep. could be or. Uh, I know we're in partnership with ministries. There's a, a donation probably that you guys will hear about soon. I don't want to say anything about it now. Just, you mm -hmm. know, so yeah. that, that when it goes through. We'll, we'll yeah. But, I mean, things are happening. Yeah. Things are happening that, that we used to bite, scratch, 
you know, yeah. do everything we could do to yeah. get to where we needed to be, mm -hmm. you know, especially with laws changing and things like that. We've had to make some drastic changes yeah. Yeah. that cost us dearly. Now these things are being handed to us, Amen. Wow. you know, and yeah. so those are neat things, you know, our, our outreaches, our, our missions, you know. Yeah. Um, how great would it be that one of our missionaries says, hey, we've got a need to do this work, and we just say, hey, it's fully funded. Amen. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Love it, you know. So these are these are the things that we store in our hearts. Yeah. I can't make people give. I can't make the donations happen. All I can do is believe God and trust him. And, and you know, I daily do pray, and I say, yeah. Lord, I receive that. Amen. You know, and, uh, and so we'll see what God does. Well, thank you. It's been a great conversation, Pastor Dan. And again, I think an important one because uh, for those of us who maybe – don't understand what all that means and how, how do we get up? I, I, I felt that it, it was exciting, but I don't know what we're supposed to yeah. do with that. I mean, because those things don't they're not super rare, but it's not like an every week occurrence. Yeah. Uh, so to be able to have a conversation in this setting to help. I, th I think practically uh, there's a couple of things when you get a prophetic word. Number one, obviously, you test it with the word. Amen. Yep. Uh, you test it with the character of God. And then you test it with your own heart. Is it witnessing with something that's right. in you? Obviously, when we looked at what was given at RockCon, yeah. it was. Okay. Then what do you do with it? You store it in your heart. Mm -hmm. You give the more earnest heed to the things that have been spoken. Yeah. Right. That's what the book of Hebrews tells us. We've got to give the more earnest heed. Mm -hmm. We've got to pay attention to what God is saying to us. Yes. And give earnest heed. We do what we can do, mm -hmm. but we don't get out ahead of God, and we don't try and make things happen that God's going to make happen. Mm -hmm. We allow the Spirit of God to move. So whatever yeah. our portion is, like I'm, I'm still going to pastor, still going to preach, still going to do what I do, but I'm going to trust God for the increase. Whatever yeah. that is that he foretold or foretold, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I'm going to believe that God's going to bring that to pass right. and, and continue to claim that in prayer, continue to do what I know to do until God gives me more light. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where even with personal prophecies and things like that um, and, and then corporate, like we said, for the rock, mm -hmm. we're going to do our part, inviting people, giving yeah. Uh, starting a business, whatever that looks like, whatever the practical thing God tells us to do out of that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, innovation, integrity. There was a couple more eyes in there. I forget right. what they are, but I, like I said, I'm yeah. going to go back and listen. Well, I know there was videographers, yeah. social workers. And in fact, yeah. one young person in our in our church mm -hmm. latched onto that word specifically yep. because yep. that's what they're in school for right yep. now. And they're going, that's me. Yep. I, I'm in that prophecy. Yeah. You know, yep. that excites me. Mm -hmm. That See, and that's not for Pastor Dan and Jessica. Right. That's for the body. That's well, for another all of us. confirmation was the videographers. We had someone on our team put together a yeah. team of volunteers of videographers, and when they heard that, it was just confirming, like, "Hey, I did the right thing." We Absolutely, there was a grace for it. Yeah. Um. So um, amazing things are happening, Pastor Dan. I, I I sense in my spirit, Pastor Dan, a word uh, that someone listening is. It's this conversation has sparked something in them. Mm. Uh. And so I would love as we close, if you could, we, we don't always close like this, but if you could pray. Uh, over those people listening, sure. um, it, it just whatever word God is speaking to them, whatever that God will give them the courage and grace yeah, yeah. to run with that. Absolutely. Well, I, I just want to pray for that individual that is on Pastor Antonio's heart right now. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I know that there's somebody listening, God, whether it's uh, at the release of this podcast or years in the future, you know, God. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that there is a word that's coming to them that it will witness with their mm -hmm. spirit what's already been dropped on the inside of them, that there will be scriptural witnesses, and that, Father, that they will get that word confirmed again and again. And, Lord, that they will walk out and live out the things that you're calling them to, God, that they'll trust you, they'll step out in faith, and that, God, as they do, they will see your supernatural abundance and provision, that they will see your supernatural move on that word, God, and I thank you, Lord, that they will rejoice mm -hmm. as they see the work of God completed. Lord, we trust your goodness. And, and God, I know it, it, this is one of the things that I, I, as I'm praying for this person, I'm sensing specifically, it's going to be scary to step out in faith. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I pray for the courage to do that, which you're calling them to do, God. Relationally, practically, uh, spiritually, Lord, that, that they'll know. They'll know what those steps are, God. And that as they take them, God, that they're going to see your good hand upon them, Lord. And like I said, confirmation again and again through it all, Lord, that you're carrying them through it. Father, we bless your name and we thank you. Amen. 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 Hey, thanks, Pastor Dan. Thank you guys for joining us. Again, like, comment, subscribe, share with people. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback like always. God bless you guys, whether you're listening on Spotify, the Apple app or the Apple app, podcast, podcast app 
or here watching on YouTube. We love you guys. God bless you.